if you are expecting to have any kind of interaction with your Chinese counterpart after China has suspended the climate talk, um, you, back then you said China is punishing the world. But China replied by saying that it will stay committed to its climate goals and actively participate in international cooperation on climate change. With this commitment, are you confident that you can still reach your goal? Well, we have said <clears throat> from day one that we stand ready to sit down with China on the climate issue and work together to solve what is not a bilateral issue, but what is a universal, global, existential issue. And there is no solution to the problem of climate change without China, without Russia, without India, without large countries, large economies being at the table. So we're hopeful. Uh, we're hopeful as we take off and go to Sharm el Sheikh that we can renew the important and good conversation that we were having. I met with my counterpart in the Chinese delegation in Davos in May. I met subsequently in uh, Berlin at a conference that took place there. And then I met again at a, yet another conference in uh, Sweden at uh, Stockholm plus uh, 50. And uh, we had very good meetings, very constructive, very clear where we were going to go. So I remain hopeful that at some point in the, in the near term, we can resume that. Because as I said, you cannot, no one, not China, not we, who are the two largest emitters, can solve this problem without cooperation and without global effort. Given that China has produced a record amount of coal this year, uh, up to their production, uh, President, President Xi only mentioned climate change one time in all 72 pages of his report to uh, the CCCP, CCP Congress a couple weeks ago. Um, can you go into COP, you and uh, Secretary Kerry, and the future discussions and get, uh, with confidence in your strategy with uh, China and energy and climate change is actually working, uh, prioritizing climate issues and trying to treat them as a partner on the issue? Well, as Secretary Kerry just uh, addressed this a, a couple moments ago, but I would echo what, um, what he said. Um, we have no choice uh, but to find ways to cooperate with the PRC when it comes to China. Uh, oh, excuse me, when it comes to climate. Uh, we've uh, demonstrated our ability to do so in the past, and in fact, it was uh, about a year ago uh, at uh, the, the previous COP, uh, where Secretary Kerry and his uh, PRC counterpart uh, announced a joint uh, agreement that um, helped us make uh, tremendous headway uh, towards uh, our, our ultimate climate goals. Um, the decision by the PRC uh, over the summer uh, to suspend cooperation on climate for that reason was uh, deeply regrettable. Uh, it was uh, not only, uh, um, it was deeply regrettable, uh, not only because of what it represents to the bilateral relationship, one of uh, those areas of shared mutual interest, but it was even more regret regrettable uh, because of the collective toll that it would take on the international community, uh, on the globe. Uh, it is our belief, and um, at one point uh, we heard the same thing from uh, the PRC as well, uh, that the United States and China, as the world's largest emitters, have to find ways uh, to cooperate when it comes to climate, to cooperate when it comes to limiting uh, emissions, if we are to stay within that goal uh, of limiting temperature rise to no more than 1.5 degrees uh, Celsius. Yeah, quick follow-up. So you said you have no choice. Um, so those in Congress or elsewhere that would wish for you to take a more hawkish approach, you, you think that's just not a viable plan at all? There's no other viable route other than the one that you're currently taking? You have no other choice? Uh, I have a hard time uh, conjuring what a, what a hawkish approach uh, to cooperation uh, with the PRC on climate would, would look like. Uh, this is an area that is manifestly in our interests. It is manifestly in the interests of uh, the PRC. Uh, we have demonstrated uh, time and again, including uh, in recent months, the ability of our countries, despite massive disagreements, and in some ways that may understate it, but despite, despite massive disagreements, uh, to work together uh, when it comes to climate. And we've been able to work together uh, on this particular issue precisely uh, because not only is it in our interest, not only is it in the PRC's interest, it's in our shared interests, and it's in the interests of uh, the global community.